fast yachts, a ghostly image in a video, and a very unusual upcoming video. All of that coming up right now. So first of all, news of that unusual upcoming video. You may be able to tell at the moment I'm in Fort Lauderdale. I'm actually in the North Robin Johnson headquarters in Fort Lauderdale using one of the boss's offices right now. And while I was here, our sales director called me into his office and asked me if I would like to film a 70 mile an hour, 65 foot center console boat. I immediately said yes. Partly because if I said no, I would upset Max, who's right behind the camera at this moment. Max has got one of those go fast drones, the goggles that goes along with it. We haven't really had the opportunity to use that drone to the full effect yet. So that's a video I'm looking forward to. I fly back to Europe tomorrow. I have to go to Amsterdam, maybe to Turkey as well. Then I'll be back here in two weeks. So that is a video well worth looking out for. And it also made me think that this would be a good opportunity to warm you up for that video by telling you about some of the world's fastest super yachts. When we think of fast super yachts, we often jump to the 1988 Heeson super yacht Octopussy, designed by Gerhard Gilgenast with naval architecture from Frank Mulder. Now, originally this was called Octopussy 007 after the famous 1983 Bond film starring Roger Moore. Octopussy made a massive splash as the fastest yacht in the world topping 53.17 knots. She was commissioned by the well-known American entrepreneur and yacht owner, John Stolupi. Octopussy was the impossible super yacht. No one at the time believed that a 44 meter yacht could travel at such crazy speeds. And so while she's far from the fastest super yacht today, she has retained her reputation as the pinnacle of super fast super yachts. Since Octopussy tore up the rule book about what could be achieved, today there are yachts in the global fleet capping the 70 knot mark. It's an insane speed. Here we've taken a look at the record breaking super yachts that you've got to be quick to catch. Top of the list comes World Is Not Enough. This 42.4 meter yacht was delivered in 2004 by Millennium Super Yachts and designed by the Dutch naval architect Frank Mulder and can hit speeds of up to 70 knots. She's propelled by two Paxman diesel engines and two Lycoming gas turbines producing a staggering 20,600 horsepower. She also boasts an impressive cruising range of 3,800 nautical miles at a comfortable speed of 10 knots. Quite aside from her crazy speeds, World Is Not Enough can accommodate 10 guests on board in five luxurious cabins, along with seven crew members, and she offers plenty of space to enjoy normal cruising across all of her decks. Next in the list is Foners, an Ezar yacht with naval architecture by Donald L. Blunt and Associates, and she was built in 2000. Foners can reach up to 68 knots thanks to its twin 1,280 horsepower MAN engines and three Rolls-Royce Marine 6,700 horsepower engines. Now this yacht features an exterior design by Spadolini and interiors by Celeste Delana. And like the first yacht in the list has a comfortable interior. She was originally designed actually for the King of Spain Fonna can accommodate eight guests and six crew and has some other special features, including a fully bulletproof hull. With a top speed of around 68 knots, a familiar name is the 1991 launched Destriero. Built by Fincantieri, the super yacht became the fastest yacht in the world when it crossed the Atlantic in 1992 without refueling. She actually left from Ambrose Light in New York and went to Bishop Rock lightship on the Scilly Isles, England. She did this in 58 hours at an average speed of 53 knots, reaching peaks of 70. Now the yacht won the Blue Ribbon, which in 1933 had been awarded to the legendary transatlantic liner, the Rex. 
Destriero was at the time the largest ship in light alloy ever to be constructed. At 67 meters with a beam of 13 meters and 60,000 horsepower of available power, the yacht could reach average speeds of over 60 knots. Destriero marked the beginning of the production of a new generation of high-speed vessels and helped Fincantieri to make strides in its commercial establishment. Now, before we go on to taking a look at a rather more modern yacht that you may recognize from a film with Scarlett Johansson in it, I want to take a moment to thank Super Yacht Times. They've compiled this list and something I really enjoy about working with them is that I love giving information to people who maybe don't live in the world of yachting but are curious to what happens in the world of yachting. That's a value that Super Yacht Times shares with me. Their website's fantastic, their YouTube channel is superb. So in the description below, I'll put a link to their website and also I'm going to link to one of their videos at the end of this video, so make sure that you check that out. Moving on. Probably one of the coolest yachts on the list is the Intermarine Wally collaboration yacht, Galeocerdo. The 36 meter yacht features Wally's iconic, minimalistic style and low profile. Combined with a green hull and impressive top speeds of 65 knots, Galeocerdo has three Vericor TF50 gas turbine engines, each powering a Rolls-Royce Kamiwa water jet. She also has a lightweight titanium exhaust system. Now that's super resistant to high temperatures. Cruising at 45 knots, it's pretty unlikely that you'd be able to spot the yacht if she passed you by, especially with a hull that nearly blends into the water line. Another of the older yachts is next on the list, the 1988 launched Gentry Eagle by Vosper Thornycroft. This was designed for the late Tom Gentry, a speedboat whiz who won nearly every powerboat speed record in existence. The yacht was designed to win the Blue Ribbon, which he finally did on board the yacht in 1989 in a time of 62 hours and 7 minutes to actually beat Richard Branson's previous record. Fast cars and fast yachts, and another Italian comes in next with a 35.66 meter Kerion by AB Yachts. This topped speeds of 62.3 knots. The punchy super yacht has a sharp and distinctive exterior in a metallic silver color that gives her a sports car look. She features naval architecture from Angelo Annaboldi and was launched in 2004. Probably the most unexpected yacht on this list is a 1960 launched wood and aluminium yacht, again from Vosper Thornycroft, called Brave Challenger. This hit top speeds of 60 knots, and she's the only surviving yacht from the Brave class of fast patrol boats built for the Royal Navy, alongside the HMS Brave Borderer. The yacht was completed with special permissions from the Navy, allowing her to be used for private reasons. Since 2017, she's been undergoing a massive restoration at the Trafalgar shipyard in Portsmouth, and hopefully she'll be back on the water pretty soon. The last one in the list is the True Racer, the Azimut Atlantic Challenger, designed by Pininfarina and launched by Italian shipyard Benetti in 1988. This 26.82 meter yacht hit a top speed of 60 knots, meaning that she never won the Blue Ribbon, outrun by a few of the other yachts in this list alone. But she's a super sporty looking yacht and looking at her, it's hard to believe that she comes from the Italian shipyard that we know and we now think of for semi-custom and production luxury super yachts. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a ghostly figure that appeared in a recent video. And any of you that saw the video of the 134-foot alloy yacht destination will know what I'm talking about. In that classic scene where we open the sliding doors and show you into the main salon, this happened. Now I have to admit that I did miss that when we originally published the video, so I want to take the opportunity to thank Cestus FR, who made the comment, 2 minutes 36, I love the Adams family hand to the left when the cameraman enters. Paul Siever, he says, nice boat, I see you have a magic hand opening the electric hatch. Is the magic hand included in the sales price? 
Egil's Fomins says two minutes 37. That hand and that button. Max Nex says that is one spectacular vessel. Just a question though, were the Adams family the last people to charter the yacht as they seem to have left something behind? Two minutes 38, lower left part of the screen. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it in the description below. And if you have, you'll be pleased to know that there are a lot more videos like that on the way, probably without a magic hand though, since we will have learned from that lesson. To not miss out on any of that great content and make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for notifications.